Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at a new technology that's available to us thanks to a new partnership that we have with uh, Multitech. Uh, and it is a gateway that we think is going to make it much, much easier to make use of this technology. And that technology is LoRaWAN. Uh, so let's jump in and take a look at what that technology is and what this new offering that we have available to us through Multitech is as well. All right, so LoRaWAN, first off, I should probably explain, LoRa is literally just long range. That's what the LoRa long range. And then WAN is our wide area network. And that's uh, basically referring to the fact that we're going to bring our LoRa devices in to uh, a network and have them all talking with um, a gateway. So LoRa WAN or LoRa is a wireless specification. Uh, it defines the physical and link layers of the wireless connection, but it doesn't define the application layers. So that adds a little bit of complexity with the uh, initial setup and usage of the LoRa WAN devices that you may be using. But we'll get to that in a little bit. And it uses gateways to facilitate its communications, uh, much like you're used to already with Wi-Fi. Um, if you use like Philips Hue bulbs or uh, Lutron Caseta, that kind of thing, you, you have a, a gateway that's going to allow you to talk to your wireless devices because we're not using the normal 2.4 gigahertz. It's not Wi-Fi. It's not uh, Bluetooth. So details, what uh, is LoRaWAN in a little more depth? Well, we're using a uh, unlicensed radio spectrum, so it's US 915. The spectrum that's being used varies a little bit depending on where you are in the world, but since uh, our customers are all basically US-based, this is the spectrum that we really care about. And because this is a low frequency, it means that we get, um, I'm going to jump a little bit down here, it means that we get our long distances. We get like six plus miles potentially in perfect conditions uh, of communication between our sensor and our gateway. And because that frequency is lower, we also get better penetration within a building. So we don't have to have as many gateways as maybe we would with something like um, Wi-Fi where it was initially 2.4 gigahertz. Now we've moved to 5 gigahertz. Now we've also moved to 6 gigahertz. As your frequency goes up, your ability to penetrate objects and things goes down significantly. Um, another thing that's really critical about the LoRaWAN devices is that LoRa was designed for battery-powered sensors, which means that it is very, very power efficient. Uh, most sensors you're going to get at least two and a half or two years plus of battery life. But there are also sensors that have significantly larger batteries in them that you could get, you know, several more years on top of that. Also, I'm going to jump around again on here. Uh, the sensors are configurable. So you can tell the sensor when you want it to actually communicate out with the network. Uh, you could have it be on a change of value. You could have it be at a set interval or you could have it be both. Um, all very flexible with how you want to have those sensors communicate, which then also determines how long your battery life is going to be. Now, one of the caveats with um, all of this, with the fact that we want uh, it to be power efficient, we want it to go long distances, is that our bandwidth ability is much, much lower. For our world and for what these sensors are going to be used for, we don't really care. We're not streaming video. We are literally just trying to send, you know, hey, the temperature is this. Hey, the humidity is this. Oh, somebody press this button. Very, very low bandwidth uh, intensive uh, use cases. So the fact that we're stuck with low bandwidth here is not a huge deal. Another big win for these devices is that they're very low cost, very... Um, very flexible because of that low cost ability. You have a lot of options. There are a ton of manufacturers out there for sensors, um, but for this new offering that we have for Multitech, we think um, you're going to want this gateway for one particular um, feature that it has. 
So what does the architecture look like? Well, we're uh, looking at here, we've got a building, we've got a whole bunch of sensors in it. Those sensors are going to talk out to our gateway, much like you know your phone talks to a wireless access point, that kind of thing. Um, there's a little bit of a setup process to make these things talk to one another um, because it is a secure thing. So you basically get a couple of passwords essentially that you're going to throw into the uh, gateway and then the gateway is going to go hey I see that device now and I know how to communicate with it because I essentially have the device's password and then from the gateway we are talking over backnet to it could be a supervisor it could be a controller it could be a Jace um, strictly backnet um, simple you know just as you would expect backnet to be these uh, Gateways, Lorwyn gateways tend to normally operate using MQTT as their communication protocol. Um, and normally they would be like talking to a cloud provider or something along those lines. With the fact that this gateway also does backnet, adds a lot of flexibility and it doesn't require you to have any additional knowledge about how to set up uh, MQTT and how to get all of that working. Most of the people in this industry know how to use BACnet. It's pretty ubiquitous, uh, so making use of that is pretty easy. So let's look a little bit more about this particular gateway. So this is the Multitech Conduit Series 300. Um, it is an embedded LoRaWAN network server. So a lot of the times with Lora, there's a lot of different implementations that you can do. And uh, the one that we care about most, or going to care about most, I think, is the ability to have sort of a standalone LoRaWAN network where our network is basically controlled by a little server that's running inside this gateway. Um, in addition to that, like I mentioned before, MQTT tends to be the normal way that these devices um, or these gateways communicate up with the cloud or um, whatever offering you want to use for um, doing histories and that kind of thing. But for us in the building automation space, Bagnet tends to be what we want to do because we know how to do it. Discovery is easy, uh, that kind of thing. So this also does Bagnet. There's a little bit of setup involved in making that happen and exposing the Bagnet points from based, uh, based on what you bring in over LoRa, but it's a relatively... Uh, painless process and we'll have videos showing exactly how to do that here in the future and then uh, as you would expect with uh, these sort of IOT style devices um, security was kept in mind while they were developing developing this so it has secure boot uh, that is encrypted on board uh, as you would expect and um, I feel like that's kind of table stakes nowadays and this gateway uh, is really interesting because it's cellular capable. There's a model with and without a cellular radio, so you don't need to get the radio if you don't want to use it. But that does give you the ability to throw this out somewhere um, remote and have it talking to sensors that are even more remote and bring that information back up to you know a Jace or a supervisor or something that's living somewhere far away because you also have the ability to use a VPN uh, into the device itself, open VPN or a normal IPsec tunnel um, are both supported. And then you control all of this stuff using a very easy to use web interface. Um, and again, we'll have much more detail on setting up all of this stuff here in the near future. And then Multitech does also offer sensors. Um, which we can offer you as well. So you've got a whole bunch of temperature humidity, um, which is going to be this one here with external uh, sensor, as well as leak detection stuff, movement. So you have a sensor that has a gyro in it, and it can you know send out uh, lower wave data once the uh, sensor moves in a particular way or past a particular threshold. And then you've also got um, simple things like this push button here. You press the button, it sends a piece of data out to LoRaWAN, then you could get it in Niagara um, and do something with it if that's uh, a use case maybe that you have. And then you've also got proximity sensors. So that is a 10,000 foot view of LoRaWAN, why it might be interesting for you. That long range capability uh, is really nice, I think, for a lot of installations where, hey, I've got, you know, maybe a meter out somewhere that I can't get communication to easily. 
uh, this is a really simple way to do that and very cost effective way as well. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for you. If it's interesting at all, um, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can find us at BrodyPrecision.com and store.BrodyPrecision.com. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.